Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I just wanted to come on here before I share this Green Room episode from last night and just thank everybody who came through yesterday. If you guys do not know, yesterday was my first official show with Spotify Green Room. And um, they had posted it on the app. They announced it. And it was so dope to just see how they had it written out. They wrote, Tea Time Unfiltered, The Metaverse and the Future of Virtual Reality, Facebook is now meta and things are moving more and more towards the digital world. Join Spotify Green Room contributor Lovely T to get the tea on the future of VR, AR, and the metaverse. And then you had a chance to either listen in on the app or just listen in as a guest, um, go in the chat room, participate. I think my highest listens was 800 people. Last night, we had over 1,000, 1,500 people in there. We had like 39 guests. Lots of people calling in, lots of great dialogue, and I even heard from Spotify after the show, and they basically said, unbelievable turnout, so exciting, really ride-ranging convo. So I just want you guys to give yourself a pat on the back for just coming through with just amazing dialogue, very respectful. We were able to agree to disagree, and I just love the turnout. I love the vibe. I hope you guys had a good time as well. The chat was popping, and I found out later on last night that Android users are now able to go into the chat as well in the green room. So once again, thank you guys so much for the support. Yes, it was amazing, and it's only up from here. Here. Enjoy the show. If you're here to enjoy the tea, then feel free to chat with me. Come on and talk to me. I really want to know what you Everyone, I hope you guys are doing good. Yes, I see y'all rocking out. I see the gifts. I see folks break dancing. Hey, <laughs> happy Tuesday. Thank you guys for joining me for my first official show with Spotify. And I really want to thank Spotify and the Green Room for really supporting your girl and just really loving what I've been doing these past few months. And it couldn't have been possible without you guys just coming through, showing love, and really really participate in. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All my iPhone users, y'all know what it is. We have a chat room in here that you guys can discuss. Um, anybody who has an Android, go to the Discord. The Discord is popping as well. You guys can chat with the other Android users over there. So today I got my girl Lady J on the line and we're going to talk about everything that's going on with this whole metaverse situation. Um, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Virtual reality is really becoming our future. And I'm starting to feel like a lot of people are about to be left behind. And a lot of people are really uninformed about the future of virtual reality. And regardless if you want to be a part of it or not, or however you feel about it, you know, good or bad, this is the next phase of technology. This is the next phase of humanity. And it's a lot going on. It's a lot to unpack. So definitely raise your hands if you guys want to come up and speak. So Lady J, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, how you doing, sis? <laughs> Thank you for um, co-hosting with me tonight. Always. It's a pleasure. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys are all doing well. Definitely. Um, can you turn your microphone a little bit more? Yeah, it's okay. It's better. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit better. Yep, I can hear you better now. Okay, great. So... I wanted to get into like a lot of this stuff that's going on. And I know we've been talking about it as well. Um, everything that's going on with the metaverse, there's going to be a lot of job opportunities in the future. 
it's going to be a lot of things coming down the pipeline. And a lot of people are jumping on this. And so, you know, Snoop Dogg, okay, everybody's favorite rapper from the 90s, honey. Y'all know, rolling down the street, smoking Enzo, sipping on gin and juice. Well, Snoop Dogg had bought himself some virtual land. And so when people realized that Snoop had bought some virtual land, do you guys know that in less than 24 hours, um, the property around his virtual land has gone for like 1.4 million dollars virtual property i am saying is this i think that is bananas i looked into that story and i'm like wow is this where we're going is this the direction we're going in that's what it seems to be and it's a lot of money to be made right now in the virtual uh, universe in the metaverse and they're saying at this point in time a lot of people already been conditioned if you really think about it um you have a lot of people who are into like video games right so we got the sims we got you know um second life you have a lot of these virtual reality games even things like you know like the nba games like nba uh, 2k and um um, the football games, even in those games, there are avatars. And a lot of times, you know, just like in Fortnite, people spend a lot of money on their virtual gear. You know, that is like a big deal to a lot of these kids. I can't tell you how many damn gift cards I don't buy for Fortnite and for other games for kids to buy virtual clothing. That's true. And that's true. yeah, so that's where it's like going at this point. And from what I researched, they're already they're saying that the virtual clothing industry is already at one billion worldwide. That's insane. I can't even believe that that's real. But you know what? When you can't have the things in the tangible reality, let's take it to this virtual reality. That's what we called it. Now we have this guy trying to coin the term metaverse, you know, which he stole from somebody else. But that's a whole nother conversation into itself, you know, like, Mm -hmm. but a part of me thinks too that a lot of this comes from it's kind of like the offshoot I don't know if the term offshoot is the right word it's the byproduct of you know C19 meaning that prior to January 2020 we were all close knit close quarters 9 to 5 8 to 4 whatever that was and now we've had to find a way to still interact with distance and still be efficient and effective in our workplace with our kids going back to schools and things like that. So I think that C-19 in a way is the byproduct of what was inevitably going to happen anyway. We've seen a lot of sci-fi movies, but I think that a lot of us still didn't expect it to be right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, I think the coronavirus definitely ushered it in quicker because it went from like the kids gaming, like the kids had been gaming and, you know, running through the streets of Fortnite and doing a lot of the virtual stuff. And the parents were kind of forced to catch up, you know, during the whole lockdown because it's like, OK, well, I'm not really working. I have nothing else to do. Let me play these video games with my kids and find out what this is about. And when I say a one billion dollar virtual business, I'm talking about globally. I'm not talking about in America. This is a global situation. When you're talking about something virtual, we are talking about the entire world is going to be involved in this. Um, It was recently announced that in Trinidad and Tobago, they were the first country to um, basically put themselves in the metaverse. So they're going to be taking a bunch of 3D imagery of Trinidad and Tobago, landmarks, things like that. And when you go into the metaverse in the future, you'll feel like you are in Trinidad and Tobago. So this is really crazy where this can go. And so there's going to be a lot of jobs sparking from this, right? Um, Yeah, even now we have top luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton collaborating in the digital world. They're collaborating with the metaverse. We had Moschimo. They were collaborating with Sims. We have Canada Goose. They collaborated with uh, Tabo Life. Um, Taobao, excuse me, life. So you have a lot of these big 
luxury fashion houses, they're seeing the value in this and they're running to this space now. So now not only can you floss in the real world and, you know, stunt on your haters, well, now they're bringing all that bullshit that we don't even want to see, you know, that we're literally tired of seeing on Instagram, the constant flossing and the constant showing off. Well, now it's in the virtual space. And if you guys do not know, um, just two days ago, a digital Gucci bag, okay, in the U.S. sold for $4,000 on Roblox. $4,000. So it, that was even more than what they could have sold it for in the real world. So in Ro- they sold it in Roblox uh, coins or whatever, and it was like 350,000 Roblox coins, and which, you know, equates to over four thousand dollars so that has really has so that really got a lot of fashion houses thinking like okay being that people are not really buying luxury brands as much because you know the economy is not the best right now right Mm -hmm. if they have all of this digital coins and they're playing all these video games then they can use those digital coins to buy our digital purses and it's actually selling people are buying this you know like I said Snoop Dogg just got new neighbors who spent over a million dollars in NFTs to live next door to Snoop Dogg. It's getting real, you guys. Yeah, I saw that. I actually looked into that. And I'm like, 1.23 million on digital land to be next to Snoop. Because in real life, you can't do it. But you can do it in the virtual world. And it is. It's all about this clout. And it's a scary place to be. But again, I still say, is this the NFT? Is, is this the direction we're going to go in anyway? That's the question. I don't know. But it, it, it scares me. Um, I think about when you said the whole Trinidad and Tobago. Remember mm-hmm. when when remember when Puerto Rico, y'all, remember they had that Hurricane Maria a few years ago? And then um, Mark Zuckerberg got dogged on MSNBC for trying to do some virtual reality being in Puerto Rico the same time Trump was throwing those paper towels at people. Does anybody remember that? I feel like this all was the test run. This was all the test run because we saw the roadblocks. We saw the Minecrafts. And You know, I have kids. They are transfixed. They are transfixed. They stay in this metaverse. So it's Mm -hmm. scary. It's scary. Yeah, it's it's a lot. I mean, and I was just so surprised that there's going to be a lot of jobs coming down the pipeline, you guys. And that's what I want you guys to understand, that I feel like they're going to be taking a lot of things in the real world. They're going to be put, putting them in the metaverse. And so one of the jobs that's being put out there is for people who are digital photographers, if you know how to do 3D imagery. And when I say 3D imagery, like let's say you're going to go buy a house. This was really big when during COVID, during the lockdown, when you couldn't go house hunting, you would go into these people's houses with 3D imagery. You could literally walk through the bathroom, go from floor to floor. It's really crazy because I had to, we did a 3D image in my house that I sold this past spring. And it was insane to walk. Yeah, remember? We were insane to walk into my home where I live virtually. But that's what they're doing. So right now, there's going to be, you know, a, a form of income for people to go around the world, right, and take 3D image pictures to put in the virtual world. And what's eventually going to happen is that they're going to, like, people are going to be able to pay to have people come and do 3D imagery of their home, of every Uh facet of your home, your furniture, your plants, uh, your office, your bathroom. So then that way, when you go into the metaverse, you feel like you're literally, quote, unquote, at home. Yeah. And I think, too, I I think about some scenarios here and I think about people that I know adjacent Um, and a lot of these gamers who, you know, sit in their spaces and do not interact with people at all. Like you hear there's this terminology for people in Japan who are just really solitary, you know, solitary and stay within themselves. And then you have these gamers who just interact with people who are in that virtual world and don't have the social skills to interact with people in the tangible 3D world. And Mm -hmm. what really just scares me too is that I feel like at least here in America, 
and I can say in other parts of the world, but specifically in America, you see the playing field being kind of smoothed over for this shit. And the reason why I say that is because Unfortunately, I'm going to get political quick, but if you think about the things that we've been dealing with with this concept of fake news and people challenging using terms like alternative facts and things like that, it kind of like leveled the playing field in order for people to be able to be able to just digest anything. And then people get on these places like Facebook and these these different type of platforms and say all of this different stuff while some people get shunned and their pages get closed and shadow banned while others are promoted because it does something to just to see oh let's see how the people are going to move in this direction I think all of this stuff has been an absolute scam and it's been a test to do what I think governments are doing now with all of these different initiatives and things like the metaverse. I think it's a little bit always more deeper than I think we would consider it. And that's what's just really jarring because it's happening so fast. We it thought really about this is. years ago and we talked about this. How many times have you had um, Zoom meetings and green rooms and discords talking about these different like sci-fi type of scenarios that we thought were 10 years coming down the road? And here we are going into 2022 having this conversation. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Let me go ahead and bring some people on. Um, when I bring you on stage, make sure your microphone is muted until I say your name. Um, so I'm going to start bringing people on here and we can go ahead and, and talk about this. Um, let me go ahead and start with Jose. Jose, go ahead and unmute your microphone. So he can Yo, What's sorry. up, Jose? <laughs> well, what I want to speak about really, really quickly, not mm-hmm. to get too, too deep. But if, has anybody seen that meta commercial with the kids at the museum? I've seen a few of them. I don't know if I've seen that one. There's been so many commercials lately with the metaverse. So the metaverse, there's like this weird commercial where these kids are at like at an art gallery. Mm-hmm. And um, they're all POC or like racially ambiguous, which is also very funny to me. And... Um, There's this song that they're playing called SL2, Way in My Brain. That's the song that's playing in in the commercial as well. There's a tiger killing an ox. The boy boy in the commercial is wearing this really crazy Black Sun shirt. And it's, I don't know, it's just, the commercial is so trippy. And I love hallucinogens. I love shrooms. I think they're spiritual. I think they're beautiful. But it, 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 it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of giving me the vibe of we're going to be tripping without spirit. We're going to be tripping without God. Like, mm. it, it, it's very, very demonic to me. It's, it, it really does freak me out. And when I, and I've been a DJ. I've, seen, I've gone to, like, really amazing sh- sets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the way these kids are moving is the same way DJs move when they're, like, peaking when they're doing a set where the people are going nuts and you do get possessed by music. I've, I'm okay. Sometimes getting possessed by music. I know that sounds crazy, but it, the whole commercial was just like possession and like tripping without like God. It, it, it that, that's as far as I can go into getting deep. Cause it's the green room. It's not the same as a zoom meeting, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's it's very very terrifying because I do think that this is like very spiritual and it reminded me a lot of um, the Animatrix the world record scene with the with the track star. If anybody knows what that is, look it up. But mm-hmm. that's what, that's the vibe that it was giving me. Animatrix world world record. Look that up, and you'll see what I think the metaverse is going to do to us. But that's all I got to say. Okay, well, thank you so much for calling in, Jose. I appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, bye. Um, Cassandra, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hi. Oh, my God. I love watching your videos. I just discovered you a couple years ago. It's so exciting to finally be part of the Discord now. Thank you so much, and welcome to the show. What do you think about this whole metaverse situation? 
Um, so I have a qu- a couple quick points that I want to touch on just because I mm-hmm. saw this coming a while ago. So basically, I remember when Shane Dawson started making his conspiracy YouTube videos. That's when he like kind of like got revamped. People were interested in his channel again. And mm-hmm. he was covering this one Instagram page that was of a virtual woman. And her name was Loma Kayla. Oh, I don't know if you Kayla. remember that. You remember, remember that, right? Remember they, the, her programmers try to like come for me when I was like calling her out a few months ago. They had oh, her. Oh, like, I remember post that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, I'm not trying to kill humans," but then it was highlighted in white that she was going to kill humans. No, I was yes, that's about what her. I'm saying. Yes, and I remember <laughs> back. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I had a bad feeling about her, like when Shane Dawson was talking about her because he was asking her questions, like. He's personally spoke to her because he was so interested in who was actually behind running the page. And she would really give ambiguous answers, talk around in circles, not giving any real answers to what she was actually doing. And it's probably just because she felt like her Instagram page would run better if it wasn't actually her. And it was a character that she made. And it just reminds me of all of what's happening now, like today, like this is what we're about to do. And it's giving me a demonic vibe, too. Like, I genuinely feel like all this metaverse stuff, like if you go ahead and like download your soul or into an AI or something, I genuinely feel like you're actually selling your soul and you won't be able to like enter heaven like you'll be eternally in purgatory. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So because I, I know one thing I felt with a lot of these billionaires like trying to go into space and go into the metaverse. Is it a place where eventually like when we all watched that movie the other like we watched it like two weeks ago. I can't think of the movie name. Y'all can write it in that little boy who was in that virtual reality future. If somebody could write it because the name is like escaping me right now. But mm-hmm. remember, it was almost like. With, with like all of this AI and, and these different worlds, is it a place where we will, thank you, Ready Player One, that's the movie, where we will live mm. forever? You know, once See, our physical bodies exactly. die, will our spirits and our and our essence be in this metaverse? So that way we never really technically die. You can always talk to mm-hmm. me and I'm always going to be like, honey, even if I'm not here. Exactly. You know? That's what exactly. my mind goes is. It scares me. No, it scares me too. Like, it's given me like selling your soul, but you don't really know what you're doing with your soul type deal. And like, they're selling you this amazing like thing you'll live forever like if you don't want to be in the real world like shit just go to this virtual world like no that sounds so strange to me like this has never happened before and it's coming so fast like a train like a freight train it's it's really not stopping like once it got going it's just been you know now facebook is metaverse it's like a whole bunch of weird shit is going on and it's another right it's happened so fast because it's like he announced it and you know like all of these name changes were done years Ooh. ago. Nothing happens yes. overnight. So all of this was planned. But it's like he Not announced it. Thing. He talked about it and like my head has been spinning for the past three weeks since he announced it. It's like there's all this virtual real estate. People are buying clothes. People are like, Tia, you're going to get a house in the metaverse. I know. I'm it's like, so strange. No. And meanwhile, people are like literally taking real money and, and putting it, it into virtual a fake money. world. It's so it's weird to me. My mind's blown. So weird. And just one more quick thing. I know I have to get off soon, but just I feel like because I don't know if you believe in this conspiracy. It's not very conspiracy like because they found out that like the COVID, you know, mutation or whatever was definitely manipulated by people. And that's why it's so fast to mutate. I'm thinking like like. Mm, what if they released this virus on purpose so that they could push people into the metaverse and scare people? Like, was this the whole entire plan so that, you know, it's, it's a virus that you get in the air. You don't want to be around people. Like you don't want to be around anyone. You want to stay in your house. And now that Mm -hmm. you have to stay in your house, we're going to offer this virtual reality. So you never have to leave your house. It's like a whole, I feel like this has been planned and this it's now coming to fruition. Yeah. And I feel very, very strange about it and i'm i'm not interested in it at all yeah i'm like camille is saying in the chat i've been talking about this for i mean at least like the past two years i mm-hmm. really feel like the coronavirus was ushered in it's the a real virus like i've said mm-hmm. people have died yeah. i know people i had an uncle die so it's not 
Ooh, fake, yeah, me too. You know, thing. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is that I feel like this was a catalyst to push all of this. And now we got the damn the Omarion way. virus two stepping in on the scene. You and then all those weird connections you made, and all those weird connections mm-hmm. you made with the name. So weird. So weird. Yes. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of this is planned. And I think the metaverse, because like I always tell you guys, you know, problem, reaction, solution. So the problem was COVID and germs and, oh, my God, you can't trust your neighbor and your family that can get you sick. Everybody's social mm-hmm. distance. So that's the problem. Well, now here's the solution. Now, because you can't really they don't want you to be around other people because you can spread the uh, Omicron virus. Well, now mm-hmm. we can all go and kick it in the digital world. We can go into the yep. Fortnite concerts. Justin Bieber just put on mm-hmm. a, a, a virtual concert a few weeks yep. ago and millions yep. of people were there. You know, and it so, all started with yeah. Travis and Scott and it all started mm-hmm. with Travis with his Fortnite concert. Yep. And then coincidentally, eight people, 13 people. I don't know how many people died at his concert. It's very all very just like step by step by step, in my opinion. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Cassandra, for calling in. I appreciate you. Of course. Thank you so much. Definitely. And you guys, if you want to give um, any diamonds, just double tap on the person's face. So definitely show the speakers and everybody talking love. Um, let me go ahead and bring on uh, Justin Blade. Justin Blade, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Oh, my God. Hey, T. How are you? Hey, Justin. How you doing, boo? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. I literally love you so much. I watch all your videos all the time. Thank you so much. So what are you thinking about this whole metaverse virtual world? Are you here for you? Are you not here for it? Let me know your thoughts. I am so not here for it. Like it is literally scaring me so much. And Mm -hmm. I really think what's scaring me the most is like how hard they're pushing it. Like kind of like what Jose said, like literally every, almost every video that I watch on YouTube, there's an ad for the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And it's like the way they're trying to push it to different communities. Like there was one ad, I don't know if anyone else saw it, but like it almost seemed like they were trying to push it towards like the trans community. Like, oh, you can be anything you want in this world. If you're, you know, you're trans. I saw that ad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) It's so weird. I'm just like, they're soon they're going to try to push it towards black people. They're going to be like, oh, you're experiencing racism in the real world. Go down, get in the metaverse. And there's no such thing as racism. Like, right. You can be purple. You can be pink. It doesn't matter. You're an avatar. Everybody's the same. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's definitely scary. And, you know, I think right now I, I saw the whole ad that they did with, um, uh, Mark. And right now it's like the animation's looking like very cartoony. It's looking like not too real or whatever, but like mm-hmm. y'all have to realize like, like a couple years ago, like video games was literally like Pong, like two lines and a dot. And now mm-hmm. video games are like so advanced that they look like real people. Like, and it's only been like a couple years. I can't imagine like what, what the metaverse is going to look like in like 10 to 15 years. It's going to like be so real that you can't even like distinguish it from real life. Yep. That's what I feel. And my thing is this. Nobody's talking about this, but let, let me and you talk about it. Okay. What about <laughs> crime and nefarious people? So, like, Ooh. like is everything in the metaverse just supposed to be good? You mean to tell me that the asshole in, real, in the real world is going to somehow just be super sweet in the metaverse? Like, are people going to be, because you think about Grand Theft Auto. What do people do in Grand Theft Auto? Run around shooting people, beating people up, stealing cars. Well, will we have to deal with this nonsense in the metaverse. Granted, we can't technically die in the metaverse, but will there be crime where people can steal your NFTs? Like, I, I just feel like they're making it seem like it's like this beautiful, happy place. But with with all this technology, there's always some type of corruption. What if the Russian hackers come in and and take your avatar and now your avatar is out here wilding out? What are they going to do? Okay. I'm like, are there going (laughs) to, I'm like, are there going to be cops in the metaverse at this point? Like, what is, what's going on? Like, it is, it's, it's just so weird. And, um, I don't know. I just feel like I saw this one TikTok and they were like, yeah, everyone's hating on it now. But when, you know, when social media first came out, people were skeptical at first and now, everyone's on it you know so mm-hmm. i don't know right now i'm hating but you'll you, who knows in like 10 15 years you might see me with my vr set on you know living my best life so right you know. right no that's the truth eventually we all end up conforming in some way shape or form and exactly if you're talking about your livelihood you know what you do for a living and you know if your boss is like well our company's moving to the metaverse and that's your job. Well, what do you do? You know, just like yep. a lot of these companies were saying, well, we're mandating the vaccine. Either you get it or you, or you get fired. 
And right. look how many people have to go get it, you know, not because they wanted to, but because they have to take care of their families. So, yeah, I feel like they are definitely pushing this for a reason. For sure, for sure. And I just, I don't know, it just seems like very demonic and just like, I'm I'm not into it, but we'll see. I just want to, you know, I don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to say I love you and you keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> love you too. Thank you for calling in, Justin. Appreciate you. No problem. All right, bye. Bye. All right, let me go ahead and uh, bring on Laquita. Laquita, go ahead and unmute your microphone. It's Tifa Stone. It says Laquita on here because it's my actual name. It's Laquita. Oh, Chiba Stone, how you doing, sis? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm about to give y'all some real deal about this metaverse because I already bought land in the metaverse and I've already... See, my thing is, even though I'm not a part of it, I know my kids still need generational wealth. I know that mm-hmm. my kids need to live and be so i'm on everything that is meta just because i know this is coming no matter what we feel no, mm-hmm. matter, no matter what's going on in our brain they are going to make this a reality so yeah. i need everybody to understand you don't buy nfts nfts are non-fungible transfers which means you can't really make money off of it unless that makes money but you can always mm-hmm. make money off of the fungible transfers which means everything else is not an nft like a DeFi and everything else Make money off of that because when you make money off that, it's always going to make money like a stock market. This is going to be the new stock market. When you get into crypto, that's the new stock market. So if you get into it now and read all of those abouts and uh, and get into all these apps that are saying, hey, we're going to give you this free crypto of this and free crypto of that. Spend that hundred dollars. Like, mm-hmm. trust me, you need to get in because, OK, what I did was I bought some land in the metaverse. Right. Mm-hmm. And the way that this works is. You have to be standing right there at that moment in that time. If it is not already claimed, you can buy that land if you have that money right then and there on your hand. And your so, where are you going to buy the land? Because that's the part I'm trying to figure out. There's so many different sites. Okay. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. Tuned in or anchorfm.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.